Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how you can make a burning status effect system that you can add to anything you want. It's customizable, so you can change the effects, you can change the duration, and all that stuff. I'll just show it. So, the fireball is not actually part of this, but it's the, it's the burn after it. So, obviously don't look at the effects, because it's just for a showcase. But as you can see, it does burn and it doesn't affect. You can change the effect, of course, to make it nicer. But you can't have like multiple that overlap each other, so it stops. You know? And it just overrides the previous one with the new burn, as long as the new burn was a longer duration. So you can change this all yourself. And as usual, you can just get the, the whole thing in the description if you want for free. Or you can just follow the tutorial. It's up to you. So now I'll actually show you how you can do this. So, what we need is just one module script, which is going to handle all of it. You can ignore all of the other things I've got here because this was for the fireball, so I can showcase it. But the one thing you need is this burn handler module. And this script here shows how you can just apply it. So you would just require the module, and you can ignore this. Then, for you know whatever enemy you want to actually make the burn be on. That would be the first parameter. The second parameter is the damage that each tick would do. And this one is the duration. So yeah, that's it. This is what you would do. You can add this into uh, whatever you want to have. So I'll actually show it in the combat system. I think it was in here. Oh, in, in the fireball, I mean. So I would just require the module at the top here. And then down where you actually do the uh, damage or like collision detection with the fireball's hitbox you would just do burn effect dot apply burn and then the first parameter is the character so the thing that you hit it has to be a model so a character it can't be like a part of the character like humanoid root part or left arm or something it has to be the character so you put the characters the first parameter second one is how much damage you wanted to do and the third one it yeah, the third one is the iteration. Now I'll actually get into the module itself. So let me zoom in. So this is the module for the burning for the, the whole thing. So as a result, we just need, oh yeah, wait, I did forget. You do need the remote because it's actually another script for the um, local side of things for the actual burn itself. There are two scripts, so you need a uh, burn remote in here in the replicate storage in the remotes and I'll show you where you use that this handles the duration and the damage and then we have another script which handles the actual effects because you shouldn't do effects server-sidedly so in start to play scripts you want to have a folder here and inside of it you could just have a local script for the burn uh, local side of things and inside of the burn handler here in start to play start to play scripts you want to have the effect my effect is just a very simple like just oh wait i don't know where it is so it's just like just this you know it's not very good it does the job so yeah you can make your own one make it nice uh, for whatever game you're making but yeah uh, so let me explain this and then I'll get to the client side of things. So here's where we do the apply burn thing. The first thing is the target. Second one is the duration. Okay, so I had it the wrong way around. This is the duration and this is the damage. So first thing we check is if the target is a model. So if there is a target, oh no, if not target. So if there's no target or the target isn't a model, then it will return end. Uh, then we get the humanoid and the root part because we need these for, uh, yeah, we don't actually really need the root part, but we're just checking if it has a root part. But we do need the humanoid. So, if there's neither of those, we'll turn end. But if there are, then we will uh, look through this table that we have here. This is the table that we're going to use to check if you are already burning or you already have a burn on you. So, it will check this table and target. So, inside of the table, it will check for you or whoever the target is, uh, and if you are in there, then it will uh, get the data, so the the data is basically 
as you can see here, the time left and the damage. That's the data. And that would be inside of the target. That's why you're doing data is burning enemies dot target. Well, brackets target. And then it checks if the duration that you put in is more than the data's time left. If it is, then it will change the data inside of the table dot time left to the duration, which is the new updated one. And then uh, the damage will be up set to the new damage that you put in. So if that's all good, then, oh no. So if that's not the case, then it will set a new one or it will set the stuff to uh, whatever you put in. So it won't have to update anything. And this is just the, the basically the same thing that you have here. You will just go inside the table for the target and then you will create a new table in there or like a new value in there for time left and you'll set that equal to the duration that you put in and you create a new value in there as well for the damage and set that equal to the damage that you put in here. Then here's what we do the effects. So we do fire all clients, put through the target and then this is a value to check if you do the burn or don't do the burn. I'll get into that when you get in the actual local script. And here we just do a spawn function which has a loop inside of it. And in this loop, we will just basically update the burn every half a second. And this loop will continue going until your time left is zero for the burn. So yeah, while burning enemies, so while you are burning, uh, well, while you are in the actual table and your time left is more than zero, so your burning duration isn't finished. And if you're more than uh, zero health, we know if you have more than zero health, then it'll yeah, less than or equal to zero health, then it will stop the loop. And you will do take damage, the amount of damage that you put in. So for every tick, the damage in here is every tick. And there are, uh, it's a tick every half a second. So that's like, so basically double the damage that you want in here. That's how much damage you would be doing per second. Or you could just say that this is the damage that you do every half a second. Yeah. So in here we do one of the viral clients. This is in case you want to do like a uh, visual thing so it shows how much damage. You could do that in here. And you can send through the damage so you know how much damage is doing every tick. I didn't implement this, but if you want to, you can. You would just use a billboard GUI. You can go look up how to use that. And then yeah, here we have the duration, so you wait half a second every single tick basically and it checks if you're in there after every half a second. If you are, then it'll reduce the time by 0.5 and uh, it again checks if your duration is less than or equal to zero. And uh, if it is, then it will stop. So yeah, that's basically it for this. Now we can go into the client side of things, which is in here, just one script. Now this may look like a lot, but yeah, I didn't end up doing the billboard thing. I was going to, but it's kind of just annoying to do. I can make like a separate video on that, just for how to actually make a proper damage thing. But this was just mainly for the burn, so didn't really need this. Uh, it's quite a simple thing, so I can just leave that blank. So yeah, I did label some things. So usually I don't label anything because I can just kind of explain it, but. Here we just need a couple services as usual, replicate storage so we can uh, get the remote. And then this is the actual remote, uh, which is here, the burn remote. And it's the same things that we have in the other one, except we have start here. Start is used to check if you start the burn or stop the burn. So in here we fire through true to start the burn. So if start, uh, which means if it's true, then it will do stuff in here. Else, meaning it's false, it will do stuff in here. So this is where it would stop the burn effect, and this is where it would start the burn effect. So, and these are just a couple checks I did to make sure that it works. So let me just take this stuff out. There we go. So here we just need the same thing that we did in the other one. Check if there is a target. Same thing as before. We get the root part because that's where we're going to put the effects. Actually, you should probably put it in the torso. 
it doesn't really matter because if you put it in the torso it'll be like yeah no you should put this in the torso let me actually just change that right now uh, target there we go and if you're doing this in R15 you would want to do upper torso but mine's R6 so I'll just do torso I think it's R6 yeah, it's R6. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do torso. Because if you do root part, well, let me actually, I can actually just show you. The humanoid root part doesn't change when you are uh, doing an animation. So if you're running, for example, and your body is tilted forward, your humanoid root part would just stay in the middle. So that means the effect would be like not even on your body. So change this to root part. I mean, I mean torso. So if not torso, and then yeah, we'll just change the parent to the torso. So yeah, just a quick change. So if it starts, then it will clone the effect inside of the script, which is for the actual burn effect, and it will parent it to the torso. And we just loop through the uh, effect, which has a attachment. We're actually uh, cloning the attachment, not the part. So clone the attachment inside of it, and you compare that to the torso. And then we're gonna loop through the attachment, uh, like, like this. So you do a full loop, I comma V, uh, in your effects, which is the thing we just created, get children. This just gets everything inside of the attachment or the thing. And the V is just uh, this itself. So the particle emitter. So the V is the particle emitter and it loops twice because there's two in there. So for both of those, it will emit three. So however much you want it to emit, you can change this yourself or if you want it to emit a lot less, up to you. And we'll do debris, add item, uh, the effect for 0.2 seconds. So it creates the effect for 0.2 seconds and then deletes it. And this is kind of not necessary in this case because it's a very short effect. But when it ends, you can just destroy it. So it's not really necessary because we're using debris here. But you know, just an extra thing. This is mainly going to be useful for the billboard GUI if you want to destroy the billboard GUI and not just make it invisible. But, you know, same thing there. You could just use a debris. But yeah, this is in case you want to have any other special things. Yeah, it's up to you. But yeah, that's for the most part it. If you do want to add the build with GUI, I can make a video on that. Or, I'm sure there's some videos out there on that. Uh, build with GUIs are kind of annoying. I'm not a fan of them. But yeah, that's how the people who do the on-screen uh, damage indicators, they use the build with GUIs, in case you are wondering. So yeah, that is everything.